We're going through half the league's winners and losers, but we're going through the top half. That's right, the AFC, the better division in the National Football League. We're covering every single team. Who are the winners? Who are the losers? And all from a fantasy football perspective, not an NFL perspective. Make sure you like this video, leave your comments, subscribe, and enjoy. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome in, one and all, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, back with you Thursday, May 4th. Show 1400, according to... Wait, on the dot? I don't know, according to Brooks. Oh, yeah. Wait. Wait, we're not... So, uh, we don't so I can't wait to find out what's planned. <laughs> this is going to be so special. Well, you don't plan something for 1400, but... That I mean, that means fifteen hundred is going to happen this year, right? Because sh show one thousand was the real special yes. one where they yeah, got all the time. the wives to come on the yep. episode. That, that is the one, and we're four hundred past that. We are. What is going on? It's also May the fourth. What's up, nerds? <laughs> oh, are pew, they pew, nerds? Pew, 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 they pew, are nerds. Pew, pew. Okay. Star Wars? Oh yeah, super nerds. I just wanted to make sure what was inside your Dungeons and Dragons bubble, Mike, and what wasn't. I'm pretty sure it's just Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Everyone else is nerds. Yeah. Right. But also, I mean, I'm a part of that community because I like Star Wars. <laughs> oh, you do, are you a pretty big Star Wars fan? Yeah. I like it. Really? Yeah. They they it's it's a really weird franchise because they they can let you down a lot and then you just keep going back because it's just such a cool place to be. They're the only franchise with lightsabers, and that's really what. That'll that'll draw Light, you back in. Yeah, the the cool factor of lightsaber can overcome a lot of different things. Plot, acting, yes, writing. Yep, Con you you can keep going. But uh, the light, I mean, you know, what laser swords? I'm, I'm in. in. I guess you would say that there. It's like Keanu Reeves. You can put him in the middle. He is the lightsaber of actors. Ooh, we should get him in a Star Wars flick. Oh boy, don't get Mike going. Don't <sighs> yeah, get him going. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got to keep these pants on. Are we still at... Here's the one thing I don't know. Are we still at zero accidents with the lightsaber? Like, we've had yeah. all these movies. Are, are we still at... All the wielders of the lightsaber, no one's ever accidentally... They've never touched their leg with it. No, not on ever, film. Not on film, but yeah. some of the ones... Oh, you know in Jedi training somewhere that... They that, hacked that, their that own a, arm off? That a Padawan has <laughs> just been... Had to, like... They just e cross them out of the book. Nothing happened. Oh, boy. And it was just... He was doing some cool spins. And, and then... And then just split himself in half. Oh, Ooh. man. It's a laser sword, man. Yeah. It's very dangerous. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm surprised we haven't seen any on film. <laughs> Uh, AFC winners and losers today on our fantasy football podcast. Brooks, you excited? Oh yeah, Deucer Zally has got. Uh, you you can say other things, by the way. You you can say. Need, are you a, need to? Are you a Star Wars guy? Yeah. Nah, nah. Brooks oh, gives. Oh no, <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> nah. Jay Grizz in the building, filling in for Al Borland. Kyle is here. Kyle, you a Star Wars guy? I like Star Wars. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I'm in that. That's the tone that I take with it. It's fun. But, yeah. not, but not like, you know, I'm not, not, I'm not dressing hard. up. Yeah, I understand that. And, like, I don't know anyone's name. Right. I mean, there's there's a Skywalker here and there. There's a <laughs> there's a, a Han Solo. He had Darth Vader. Yeah. All right, we have uh, AFC winners and losers, some news to talk about. A couple headlines at the top of the podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. We have a dynasty podcast that's releasing episodes every week we do a it brand was, new one yesterday it was jam-packed we did a uh real deep i mean the draft wasn't deep because it was two rounds but it's 75 minutes of a two-round rookie draft a mock draft and it is it's all four of us usually we have uh on the show is borg bets and then one of myself or jason we brought the entire four pack in you know, we were breaking down these picks, why we like guys where where we like them, and just, you know, setting some values. If I may be so bold. And oh you may. It was an awesome episode. Yes. It was very informative. 
and probably one of the best things you'll ever listen to if you give it a shot. So that that was <laughs> uh, confirmed. That was uh, confirmed chat GPT said yes. Yeah. Impartial. AI AI yeah. is constantly listening to our <laughs> show and occasionally weighing in with with uh, its judgments. Also, yes. pro tip. Say nice things about AI because they will be our overlords soon, <laughs> so they will remember. That's a pro tip. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love you, AI. You are beautiful today. Um, yeah, me and AI have gotten into it a little bit. Yeah, you you told it to punish itself, I believe. I, I had an interaction with it because I was looking for all of the first-round quarterbacks drafted in the top 15 picks for the last 10 years in a nice list. And it gave you that list. And it list. gave me that list, and then what did I do? You used that list, you tweeted that list, you made conclusions based on that list, and then someone pointed out, where's where's Ryan Tannehill? And then I told Chad GPT, I said, hey, where's Ryan Tannehill in this list? And then it said, oh, you're right. <laughs> I, for, I missed I that forgot. one. <laughs> I missed it. You're a computer. How are you missing things? How do you know it's right if you didn't include it in the first place? Look, I mean, shame on you for not fact checking the computer. Not a Tennessee fan is what I figured out mm. there. Um, well, or Miami, fan. or Miami, yeah, yeah, because that's where he was drafted. But anyways, he, he he did not apologize, and I asked it to take a timeout. And anyways, we're not talking right now. Uh, the <laughs> ultimate draft kit pre sales going on ultimatedraftkit dot com. The UDK Plus Dynasty Pass. We just completed the post NFL draft update, which means yep. a new. Rookie mock draft, updated dynasty startup and rookie rankings, now including two quarterback rankings for the first time ever. Brooks, go ahead. Oh, yeah. There yeah. it is. Yeah. There it is. Two Brooks. quarterback rankings. Brooks has wanted super flex information forever. Also, if you are in a super flex, you are in a two QB. I know you can also play someone else, but those are the same rankings. For the most part, you treat them identically. And then the Dynasty Trade Targets, Rookie Risers and Fallers, all of it updated. The Rookie Rankings, like I said, they're in there. So, uh, ultimatedraftkit.com, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. A couple of one-year deals to talk about. Jerick McKinnon, back to the Chiefs. Here we go again. The Chiefs declined Clyde Edwards-Alaire's fifth-year option. Not surprising. And uh, McKinnon's going to be a, a key part of this offense that will have multiple backs. Yeah, he'll do what he's done for the last couple of seasons now, which is be an important pass catcher. He was very good for fantasy. He was a top uh, 24 running back last year. So uh, when I say very good, I mean relative to the cost. He is uh, was my most common final round pick in best ball last year. And now that he has spent the offseason not a part of the team, He'll be right back there at the last, you know, 18th rounder. We'll say the uh, the, the the correlation of when Jarek McKinnon turned into a like a league winning type of a pickup because weeks 13 through 17 he was the running back 16, 1, 1, 21, and 6. That uh, is directly correlated to the games that Clyde Edwards Alaire missed last year. So if you're drafting McKinnon, looking at that end of year finish going, oh, brother, look what McKinnon can do. Yes, he can do that, but they were just down to Pacheco and, and McKinnon last year. And uh, they did win a Super Bowl with those two. Sure, but I'm saying that, that Clyde will get some snaps. Randall Cobb, one-year deal with? Aaron Rodgers' team. New York Jets, yes. Back in uh, New York, putting the band back together. Look, it does mean that I think Corey Davis is very much going to be gone. I do not believe Interesting. that Aaron Rodgers asked the general manager if Randall Cobb could be on the team. I do not believe that the general manager made this transaction. I think Aaron Rodgers called up Cobb and said, hey, you're a jet. And he's <laughs> just, like, come on just out Just show here. up. They gave me the checkbook. I will write you the check. <laughs> is it legal for a player that makes a lot of money to sign – Another player for less money and pay them out of pocket. Ooh, they, like a for, sublease. For, yeah, yeah. Like, and they're not on the salary cap. They're, they're not, not even the officially on the roster. Oh, they're free. Wow. Could you have like an extra player on the roster then? Genius. I, probably not an extra on the roster, but you could sign for zero dollars and then it's all under the table from Aaron. I don't know. He loves Randall Cobb, though. Yeah. He's, Randall Cobb's they, getting some extra years out of his career solely because of his relationship they, with Aaron Rodgers. They bro down. Lions general manager Brad Holmes said the team has had internal dialogue about a contract extension for Jared Goff. Eh. 
We just talked about cough, and I, <laughs> I this does not surprise me at all. It's not it, surprising, it, it, but it's I, not. But I don't like it. No, I mean, if you're a, if you're a team that's having success, Jared Goff is a former number one pick, and um, it surprises me after you draft him and Hooker. Why? Why would you be having contract it's a third extension round pick, pick though? You need oh, to absolutely. back up. No, sure. Uh, third round pick. You didn't spend a ton of draft capital for him. You know, there's a lot of rumors that Hinton Hooker was going to go in the first, and that's fine. But you have him on your roster, and you know the future contract cost currently, pre extension of Jared Goff, and the fact that you can get out of it next year. So you've got this season to see what Jared Goff has, to see what Hinton Hooker has in practice. And then make those decisions. If you were to sign an extension today, uh, how can that not be just a mismanagement of, you know, you, you don't have to do that. You can take your time and make a more informed decision. I'm not saying they shouldn't sign Jared Goff to an extension. That He might be the, the far better player, uh, you know, Hinden Hooker coming from a gimmicky system. I just don't think you would ever want to do that now. You it, give yourself time and information. Yeah, and it's not like they accomplished like maybe on the sliding scale of lion success, it was like a Super Bowl last year. But they didn't accomplish something that gets you that like Joe Flacco post Super Bowl. We're gonna pay you too much just because you deserve too much. Right, like they did not make the playoffs. No, they 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 had a much improved season and he played well. Maybe the discussion was just hey. But you're right. Everything you said logically is right. They're like, hey, Jared Goff, you keep playing well. We might give you an extension. That's that could be that, that could be the conversation. That's a great conversation to have. I hope they've had that one. You hope that's what the internal dialogue was? Yes. You could make more money. Yeah. Like, hey, Jared Goff, you win games. Maybe we'll I give you more money. Do, they should just line the players up in a hundred <laughs> and then like <laughs> one by one they come in the door and you say, Hey, we're gonna sign you to a massive extension. If you're incredible this year, okay, send the next guy in, <laughs> right? You could just. We've do been that having some every... internal dialogue. If you play well, yeah, we'll pay right. you. Hey, rookie, welcome to the NFL. Well, on Tuesday, we took care of the NFC winners and losers, a review of the NFL draft, and uh, all the fantasy football um, implications. And today we are going to cover the AFC winners and losers, some takeaways for each of the teams. We're not talking about every single pick for each team. I'm not talking about all the defensive picks. We're, we're talking about fantasy football implications for each of these uh, landing spots for these rookies. And uh, there are rookie landing spot articles up on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, for the quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends. And the Dynasty Pass, like we said earlier, has the full rankings. All the production profiles, mock draft, risers and fallers. So you can go a lot deeper, including uh, the mock draft on the Dynasty show yesterday. But let's break it down. AFC winners and losers. Let's start with the team that made the most headlines at the top of the NFL draft that teased us with the thought that they may not take a quarterback and Mike refused to accept that story. I did. Right up into his predictions. And suddenly, right before the draft, about a couple hours before, all the odds makers were changing the line. C.J. Stroud. They listen to Mike. C.J. Stroud lands with the Texans. It's either they listened to the podcast and they realized the error of their ways, or that in draft season, everyone is a dirty, filthy, rotten liar. Mm. Could be Pro a little probably both. listen to probably you. Probably listen to you. Um, C.J. Stroud, number two overall pick. Goodbye, General Mills. Hello, C.J. Stroud. It's a great pick. Nathaniel Dell, Tank Dell, third-round draft pick, wide receiver. And then uh, and he stays home, right, out of Houston? Yep. And then uh, in the sixth round, they took another wide receiver, Xavier Hutchinson from Iowa State. Uh, you know, winners and losers on the, on the Texans. How, how do you break this down? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, the running back situation, they did not add another running back to this team. A lot in of uh, in the draft. That's what I pretty much want to bring up because every article I see is Damian Pierce is a huge winner. Damian Pierce is a huge winner. Damian Pierce is a huge winner. I'm, uh, he's my dude. He's going to be awesome. And he absolutely could be. He was so good on film last year, productive for this team, a fantastic looking young running back. But they did sign Devin Singletary. And I think people are wrong, just flat out wrong to think that he is 
a an irrelevant backup that will just come in to spell D- Damian Pierce. I mean, if you look at the history of these two guys, right? Like Devin Singletary was a day two draft pick who just got finished playing for a Super Bowl contending team as their starter, who kept last year's second round draft pick, James Cook, at bay. Devin Singletary is a very good running back. He had over 4,200 yards in, in college. And then they just, this new coaching staff, who was not here with Damian Pierce, signed Devin Singletary or was part of the, the, you know, the regime that signed Devin Singletary. I think this will be a split. And they're both winners. They didn't, it, from the draft, they didn't draft a running back. But I don't see this as Damian Pierce is all alone. I think people forgot because it was er- early in the offseason. People just don't remember that Devin Singletary is there or they don't care. I, I personally yeah, am on I, the side that I very much think you should care about Devin Singletary for the value of Damian Pierce. Sure, and I, I think the other side of the coin that I'd, I'd bring up is just that I I personally believe Damian Pierce's talent and ability is uh, was on display last year, and he's an elite. I think he's going to be an elite running back for a while. And so I don't think it's irrelevant that they signed Devin Singletary, but I also don't look at it as a death knell for Damian Pierce. He's a younger player. Uh, he's more physical. Um, he's, he's, you know, Devin Singletary, I think we all like a lot, and we all wondered, okay, if he's so good, why didn't Buffalo bring him back? If he's so good, why didn't Buffalo make him the lead guy over Zach Moss half the time? So there's some, there's two sides to the coin. I, I agree with you. People people look at it like, okay, his offseason is unscathed entirely, but Damian Pierce was also sharing time with, you know, Rex Burkhead last year and some other backs. And I Royce Freeman. Like I think Damian Pierce is going to be I think he's going to be undervalued. And so we have kind of different perspectives there. Um CJ Stroud, how much of an impact is he making in year one? Very little. Mm, I agree. Very it's, it's unfortunate because I think he's a I think he will be a very good quarterback. But the depth chart is not set up for success. I mean the the starters right now would be Nico Collins, who's kind of like if you're in a Deep, deep league, he could be considered a winner, I suppose. Then you have Robert Woods, who they they brought. Uh, you know, he keeps changing teams, and then the the hopeful return of John Mechie, their uh, second round. Kyle, it's all so looking. Draft- it's all looking good for Mechie. So John Mechie, if you don't recall, he was drafted in the second round last year, uh, and then missed the entire season battle, uh, battling leukemia. That's right. And so we're we're really hoping that he can come back. And I think the Texans are planning that he's going to be well, back. He's, he's already in. Um, yeah, he's healthy. Right. He's he's healthy. He's but already saying, in all of the pre. Whatever they what what are the what are they showing up to right now? OTA. Uh, no, it's not OTAs. Whatever workouts are whatever. going on, uh, he's there. And I'm saying the team is counting on him because they, yes, they grabbed a receiver in the third round. They t- uh, drafted Nathaniel, aka Tank Dell, uh, who is nicknamed Tank, and yet. Not the not the size of a tank. He is 5'8", 165. So he, among this class of small guys, is the small guy in the group. Uh, but he's it's hard to overlook his production. Three years in Houston, two years, uh, the last two years, over 1,300 receiving yards, 12 touchdowns, 17 touchdowns this past year. I mean... You know, the production profile is, is just green across the board here for Nathaniel Dell. Maybe it's just he was able to take advantage of people in college and he won't be able to do that in the pros, but I think he's worth keeping an eye on. Uh, we brought him up in the back of uh, – he was one of the later picks in the second round of, of our rookie mock draft, and he's interesting, but he's not going to he's not gonna be challenging, you know, John Mechie to be the number one guy for this team. The Colts drafted Anthony Richardson – with the fourth pick in the draft. I don't know if you saw the candid comments from their general manager about this pick. Please share. But it was essentially when you looked at the options that they had, because they also liked Will Levis. And you know this uh, from pre-draft uh, discussions, but also from Jim Irsay coming out and like threatening to take him with the second-round pick. They they liked Will Levis, but they basically said, we're going to take the guy that that can be a home run. We're gonna, Because if you look at it from that perspective if he hits you drafted the best player in this draft and if he doesn't hit you're probably going to have a chance to draft another one yeah right. specifically he said that they thought there were flaws in every prospect so yes. why not go for the home run and if they had had the number one pick they would have taken Anthony Richardson obviously that's something that 
you would say that's what after, I would tell my draft right, pick too. after you uh, complete the draft. But it could also be true. Uh, just because he says it doesn't make it a lie. I hope he's not a liar. But um, they had a very good overall draft. They got a value on Josh Downs yes, for did. where he was expected to go in the draft. That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is a lot of teams disagreed with the kind of fantasy community of, of Josh Downs' value. Um, I don't love the landing spot, though, because I don't expect Anthony Richardson to be one of those 4,500-yard passers. So for a receiving option, if you're not like the alpha, then I worry about how much support you're going to get. Like, for instance, Michael Pittman. Do we move him up or down here with Anthony Richardson or, or neither? Well, I, it's really down. it's really tough to go down from where they've had. He still, had a, still he had a bajillion receptions last year. That will go down. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see that, Mike. I, I think it's a good landing spot from a depth chart perspective for Josh Downs. Sure. Where, um, you know, Michael Pittman, he, what's his contract situation? Final year. Yeah. So Paris it, Campbell's gone. Yeah, it could be Josh Downs and Alec Pierce in years to come, depending on how this year goes. And I don't know if you guys saw the, uh, the Colts are just throwing out hot takes all over the place. Uh, Reggie Wayne, that Reggie Wayne, wide receiver coach for the Colts, he said that Josh Downs was the best wide receiver in the draft class. So he was super pumped when they got him, when they got him. Didn't Reggie Wayne like show up at Patriots camp once and then just go home? Do you remember that? Yes, he did. Was he part of that? With uh... I'm always going to remember that about Reggie. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to be a Patriot. Oh, they this, this no, is not. I'm out of here. Eric, Eric Decker did the same thing. I, yeah. uh, I, I worked at a movie theater for one day. <laughs> it was very similar. <laughs> it wasn't I, for you. I was there, and then I was like, yeah, I'm never coming back here. This is terrible. Yeah, you and Reggie Wayne were pretty much the pretty same. Much the same. But, but it, it, you take it with a grain of salt. However... One of the greatest wide receivers to, no, to no. play the it, game. It matters, yeah. I I will listen to what they have to say. It does matter. And like I said, I think that this is one of those situations that's a year out. I don't mind the landing spot because of the depth chart, but I think it's a year out from Anthony Richardson developing. can agree. Now, let's talk about Richardson for a moment. The offense in Indianapolis at least has the potential to improve across the board because of Richardson's presence. It looks like he has a good chance to start week one. Uh, Gardner Minshew was there, but this was such a high draft capital pick. And and you're talking about Richardson. If there's one thing he has, it's flash. And if there's one thing that'll be on display for Jim Irsay and, and company and Shane Steichen and the number four pick, it's going to be Gardner Minshew, who is like, it's not flash. Oh, he, but he's and got then, swag. He's got swag. It's swag versus flash. And I think flash is going to win. I think Richardson will start week one. I believe so as well. Some of their quotes have talked about the way that they get better is by having on the field uh, work. And so it seems like he'll be the the week one starter. And Steichen's experience, having been there with uh, Herbert for his rookie season and having, having a mobile quarterback like Jalen Hurts last year, I think he's very well positioned and uniquely positioned for Anthony Richardson. I am a big believer in the talent of Anthony Richardson. I believe he will develop into a good NFL quarterback as well as a great fantasy quarterback. I think Alex Alec Pierce is a loser from this draft um, because Isaiah McKenzie was a, a free agent ad. They McKenzie will be the they slot, drafted though. Josh or they drafted Josh Downs with significant draft capital. I just am a little worried about this year. If you're talking about a rookie's going to zone in on one guy. I think he's zoning in and on Pittman in year one, if there is one to. Yeah, day two, or I'm sorry, year two wide receivers are one of the cheat codes in fantasy football. They almost always outproduce their ADP, and for a, a rookie last year who's coming into his second year, I would agree that it, it's not as hopeful as it looked like it could be. Yeah, I wouldn't be as excited with him on my dynasty roster as I was before him. And then in the fifth round, they did draft Evan Hull out of Northwestern running back, and – Evan Hull's kind of his calling card of the last couple of years has been the receiving game. We're talking a 22% reception share at the running back position. That is absolutely outrageous. And their depth chart right now is uh, the aforementioned Zach Moss is still there and Deion Jackson. So Evan Hull is someone to pay attention to with the, if the beat writers are talking about him, he could quickly find himself as a change of pace or the backup. Coming back in a moment with the Titans. The 
The Tennessee Titans, they go with Will Levis in the second round of the draft. Went offensive tackle in the first round. And uh, there's a lot of talk. Look, if, if Tannehill struggles, if this offense struggles early, could be Will Levis time pretty quickly. I don't know if you saw the videos of Will Levis before the draft. Some more bananas. The interviews where, you know, it, it was really unfortunate because he basically said in a couple of interviews, he's like, like, are you going to the draft? And he says, I don't know. He says, the only way I'm going is if I know for certain I'll be a top 15 pick. He said, because I don't want to be the guy in the green room with the camera on me. And so Will, Whoops -doozles. William got some bad information. He ended up that being was a, on camera a lot. Yeah. And so, but he goes to, uh, I think, a good situation for him. Yes. In part because the expectations on you as a quarterback and what you're capable of change tremendously if you're a second round draft pick versus he was talked about as the number two overall pick. That was where I predicted him going. Mm -hmm. It was Houston. So, you know, for a, a chance to succeed perspective, good organization, good coaching staff, better draft capital that's proportionate to maybe your your actual ability. Like, you know, if Will Levis is a second-round quarterback, then he went in the second round, and, and it didn't do him any favors expectation-wise to get the Mitch Trubisky treatment and get drafted at the top of the first round. Um, so he could get playing time in year one is what I'm saying. And and uh, they they drafted Ty J. Spears too. Yeah, if if you talk about you know a, a player who could get playing time if the offense struggles, there are a lot of easy paths to seeing this offense struggle. They have pretty much the worst wide receiver depth chart I can remember seeing. It's Traylon Burks, Kyle Phillips, <laughs> Chica Conquo at sure, tight end. Yeah, tight end, pass catcher, absolutely. It's not a great Westbrook inspiring. Westbrook is back. Uh, it's not an inspiring group, and this is a city that has been kind of calling for Ryan Tannehill's head for a little while. Um, I know some of the fans in that area was, you know, were going to the draft saying, "There's no way Ryan Tannehill's the Week One starter." Now, that was before um, this. I do believe Ryan Tannehill will absolutely be the starter, barring a trade. But it is it's good draft capital for Will Levis. It's better to me than the thirty three. They traded up to get him when he slipped into the second round, and it's so unfortunate for him because it. We just talked about the Colts, and they basically said if Anthony Richardson was gone, they would have taken him at number four. That is a year less and millions of dollars less that changed not based on his football play but just based on how the draft board fell ahead of them. Traylon Burks, Chica Conquo do come out as winners in this draft. There's not yep. competition that was drafted um, that is going to challenge them. And if Tana, look, they're going to, they didn't trade Derrick Henry. Yet. They didn't move on from Ryan Tannehill yet. There seems to be some momentum that they may just try to run this thing back a little bit, see how it goes before they make those moves. If that's the case, Traylon Burks is going to be a top target for Tannehill who can throw the football. Chiga Conquo is going to have an opportunity to extend the field at the tight end position in year two. Malik Willis' career is over before it started. It is. And uh, let's move on. Oh, we got to pour one out. Haskins. Hassan Haskins. Yeah. Do we? Nasty. Oh, yeah. But Jason and I do. Oh, yeah. he was a... He's got a championship. He does. Spears ring. is a good pick. Did you like the Spears pick? Yes, I, I love. I loved Spears tape out of Tulane. He's a very interesting player. He's not a Derrick Henry. This is a running back. Yeah, yeah. This is a. It is. He he will move up very quickly to be the backup. Uh, and then there was we got some medical reports so that he might have a uh, a bum knee kind of already an arthritic knee so that will limit his time in the NFL. But in terms of running back shelf life. The knee will probably hold up for the contract. It is a an ironic situation for him because the two ACL tears and the fact that his knee seems like it's going to be he'll have a three or four year career is awkward landing spot to go to a place where you're the clear backup and year one you're not going to really be used. That's why I said maybe or not yet on the Derrick Henry trade because I think if they found a taker for him, you know now they have someone there that can kind of step in as a starting running back. So TBD on that. Jacksonville. Not a lot to talk about here. They did spend a third-round draft pick on a running back, Tank Bigsby. Second-rounder on Britton Strange, tight end. They've talked about an extension for Evan Ingram. Um, look, I I don't view – I don't see any big winners and losers in Jacksonville, if I'm honest with you. I don't think that 
the third round draft capital on Tank Bigsby impacts my view of Travis Etienne any more than Jamichael Hasty did. Oh, re what? I think it, it impacts it to me. I mean, a day two running back who was my uh, running back for pre-draft, I think he's a, a really solid running back. He's 210 pounds, has nice one-cut ability. And you had uh, the head coach coming out and saying a lot of talk about wanting to employ more of a committee, that they need to get more bodies in here. And the hope was that when they signed Dearness Johnson, that was the – like, oh, good, you got Dearness Johnson, get more bodies in there, and then Travis Etienne full steam ahead. As, as a, you know, in our main dynasty league, I've got Travis Etienne. I was a little, I'm a little worried about what the split could look like with Tank, because I think Tank's a really good running back, and, and to use a, a day two pick on him, it, it says, I, I think, you'll, you know, he's going to have what, 125 carries? I, no, I don't think so. I don't think he'll have that much work. I mean, I think Travis Etienne is a very, very, special player I think you saw last year the team dealt with multiple injuries at the position so I don't blame them for using a pick but I mean we've been here before in in my opinion with players like Keyshawn Vaughn drafted higher than than this that you know you don't know what that opportunity is going to be and I'm not scared yet I don't see why I don't I don't think Tink Bigsby is a better player than than uh, Travis Etienne no, or no. close to it so you're going to need a compliment on all of these teams and it just to me it's a replacement for a Jamichael Hasty or a Dearness Johnson with another young back that can get it done. I, I, I'm looking at like the way that they started the year, though. I mean, you had James Robinson getting 13, 25, 20 opportunities uh, over the first three weeks, and then, I mean, it, eventually it was pretty clear to the team of we can't keep giving this guy the ball. And then Travis Etienne rose, and he had that huge spike right in the middle of the season where it looked like, this will never end. Travis Etienne is going to be fantastic for fantasy football. It kind of fell off there, though, after, after that happened. It, so I just I have concern that Etienne is the main guy. That's not the concern, but it's the timeshare will change to, to be closer to that week one through three where there is another player that is heavily involved. That's yeah, my I mean, concern. I, look, I, I don't. I don't love the part of the year where we're. I don't want people to go out and trade Travis Etienne on this news personally. Not what I'm saying. We're, we're I'm talking redraft. Yeah, I mean it, Etienne got hurt. He played eight percent of snaps after the bye week, and that was a that was an issue for him at the end of the year. Obviously, Hasty made people very frustrated uh, when he was splitting some time getting the touchdowns, even when Etienne was still on the field. Um, so I mean, look, it, it's it's your viewpoint of whether these rookies are all going to have a big role or not. Uh, I like to see third round and beyond prove it in camp before I would worry about ETN too much. So to your point, Jason, I think you're just fine in dynasty. Personally, you can see uh, if you would like to trade Travis ETN to me, I am very interested in him. I'm open the to same him, but before the trade, before the awesome. drafting of tank. Bigsby. That's good because I think he's going to be a top three dynasty running back clearly. So we'll talk trades. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's clearly the best. Yeah, the value has been set. Top yeah. three top three rounds, come get him. Right. Um, AFC North, the Browns. Third round draft pick, first pick for them. Because they, uh, boy, they got uh, Voldemort. Yeah. Yeah. So the, their first pick, Cedric Tillman, wide receiver. Not my favorite landing spot for him. They have Amari Cooper. They have now Elijah Moore. They have Donovan Peoples-Jones. And then they have... Um, uh, David Bell. David Bell from last season. So, honestly, Do probably they? a bottom, one of the worst spots I think you can land as a wide receiver. I'm not sure that they view the hodgepodge of receivers that you just named, including David Bell, as Did you, uh, answers. Amari, like, Amari, Amari Cooper's Cooper? awesome. Amari Cooper's awesome, and I think they drafted Cedric Tillman to be the number two. Uh, I don't think Donovan Peoples-Jones and David Bell are guys that are good enough. To, uh, I... I I believe Cedric Tillman is a very good wide receiver, one of the better um, big-bodied wide receivers in this draft. There weren't very many of them, him and Mingo and some injured guys, uh, and, of course, Quentin Johnston. But, um, yeah, the, the, to me, it's a matter of do you believe in Deshaun Watson? Because if you believe in Deshaun Watson, that he's going to be a great quarterback going forward, then I, I find the landing spots are you know better or worse based on quarterback play rather than depth chart. Um, I think that it's a matter of 
Do you believe Cedric Tillman is talented, and do you believe Deshaun Watson is? Do you believe David good? Bell's talented? I don't. Do you believe Donovan Peoples Jones is talented? Mediocre, a jack. I think he's talented, but he's on the last year. Didn't of his we like? Didn't you like David Bell last year? I liked him before pre NFL same draft. draft. Capital. There's there's plenty of draft. We, we've talked about this a, a lot yeah. recently, where when a wide receiver comes out and really stinks it up in his rookie year, it is rare for them to get over the hump and 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 say, "No, I'm really good. I just had an off rookie season." Uh, so, like, when you look at Sky Moore for the Chiefs, when you look at David Bell for the Browns, they're not dead. They're coming into their year two, but I am pessimistic because they both had huge opportunities to play and to succeed in the rookie year, and neither one of them showed those flashes, showed those signs of, like, man, this guy looks legit. David, was, David Bell appeared in every game except for one, and, yeah, it, it, it was – he, the opportunity was there. He was getting on the field. He just wasn't earning snaps or targets. So I've, I've my long-term view on David Bell is very pessimistic. No competition for Nick Chubb selected Correct. in this draft. And Kareem Hunt gone. Um, also, Jerome Ford looks like someone yeah. that should be picked up, certainly in every dynasty league if he's out on waivers. And, I mean, he's apparently the number two as of now. They could still go out and sign someone. but They could sign Kareem Hunt. They could bring Kareem Hunt Absolutely, back. they could. Uh, if I'm Kareem Hunt, I would be like, I hate you. No. <laughs> but when I was when I was I starting take to, the money. When I was starting to stat <laughs> things out for um, the Ultimate Draft Kit, and I'm putting these players in their depth charts, one of the big winners here for me was Nick Chubb. I was like, man, they could give him an insane workload this year. So um, I, I've always – of the three of us, been more down on Nick Chubb usually when our rankings first come out and are finished, and I don't expect to be this year. How do you view? Uh, okay, yeah, let's let's just move on. The Steelers, not a lot to talk about. They nope. did sort of steal Darnell Washington later in this draft. It, it's interesting just because you know Pat Fryermuth is near the top of dynasty draft boards at tight end, top ten type of pick. Darnell Washington is a freak of nature. Um, but very, you know, does it impact your long-term view of Pat Fryermuth? It, it doesn't to me. I think Darnell Washington, his comp has been Mercedes Lewis. He is a giant road grading, incredible blocking tight end. They'll leak him out and it's going to be hard to tackle the mountain, you know, if he catches the ball, but for the most part, he's not going to be the move tight end. He's not going to be running the routes. I think actually Darnell Washington and Broderick Jones, their first round offensive tackle, this is really good for the Steelers' offense because their big issue has been protection. Their offensive line has sucked. So Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, uh, the pass catchers, uh, Kenny Pickett. Th this is a good draft for the existing players to me uh, because they didn't bring in any other skill position players other than primarily this great blocking tight end. And there's also concerns with the tight end with his, I believe it was his knee medical issue. Yeah, he fell is, for medicals. Which is why he fell so far in the draft. Yeah, a lot of tight ends went ahead of him. Uh, Najee Harris comes out a winner, um, as does Jalen Warren in this draft. They didn't obviously make any other investments at running back, and yet they improved the offensive line and the blocking. The Ravens drafted Zay Flowers with their first overall pick. Let's go. 22 overall. Uh, they are amassing some weapons for Lamar Jackson, the newly minted contract, Odell Beckham. Rashad Bateman back healthy, Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews. Uh, it, it's a good pick. I think he's a very good player, and uh, I think this is this is what we saw coming for. Like, let, let me let me put it this way: I I told people to trade Rashad Bateman. Mm -hmm. Does the drafting of Zay Flowers change your opinion on Bateman? Yes, it is. It, it, this is a worse situation for Bateman than what Bateman was in uh, prior. For sure, he is. Uh, the, you know, this is an offense where I believe they're going to pass the ball a lot more this year. I think I think Lamar Jackson is going to have a lot more passing yards, but it's not going to be one of those Justin Herbert 5,000 passing yards because you're probably going to have 1,000 total yards or near that coming from Lamar Jackson's legs, and those don't go to wide receivers, so now you split up the pie. It's not necessarily the best landing spot for Zay Flowers or for Odell Beckham, or and those two guys – aren't good for Rashad Bateman, but holy moly do those three combine with a healthy Mark Andrews to be Lamar Jackson to the moon, in my opinion. He is the quarterback that I'm getting in every best ball draft right now. 
I think he has as high a potential as Jalen Hurts, as uh, Josh Allen to finish as the number one quarterback, and he's not going to be drafted as the number one quarterback this year. So that's just my take on the situation. But I agree with you, Andy. It was a, it was a win if you sold Bateman, and I that's not because Bateman's bad, just because his situation got worse. the The whole situation for the Ravens wide receivers is will be fascinating to watch because I think everything about it is exciting. It's tantalizing. You see the upside, and yet you have no idea what's going to happen here. Like, is Odell Beckham washed after that? Uh, after another ACL tear? I don't know. Probably. It's, it's pretty possible. I know that they gave him all the money, but it's very possible that Odo Beckham is done. Is Rashad Bateman worth a first-round pick when they took him two years ago? I don't know. He looked pretty good in those first couple games. Pro but, look, let me read you the passing yardage for Lamar Jackson over the last four years when he did have good receivers. When he had when he had good wide receivers. Both, both, both and. I'm saying he had years where he had good receivers. He's had Hollywood Brown as a part of that offense before. I'm just his MVP year. He threw for 3,100 yards. Okay, the four sub, the three subsequent years, 2,700, 2,800, 2,200. So, like Jason said, the reason that he supplied incredible passing fantasy value in his MVP season was he threw 36 touchdowns at a nine percent touchdown rate. So, I, his wide receiver room is a lot is very improved. Uh, I think stability for Lamar Jackson week to week, which has been a huge problem. In terms of a game log, oh great, he's th there. He is. Oh no, there he's gone. I think that changes when you have some weapons that you can count on. But rookie, wash wide receiver, injury laden Bateman. There are question marks Let's, to me. On what I'm saying guys. it's it's wide open. It is of yeah of who's the number one wide receiver on this team. It could be any of the three. It's it's I, I'm Mark Andrews. Yeah, I'm not I'm not counting number one pass catcher. Okay. It's, it is Mark Andrews. I don't I don't disagree with that. But from the wide receiver position. I of the three, I would put my bet on Flowers right Didn't now. Didn't they have the season with Lamar where no wide receivers caught a touchdown for the entire year Something until like the very that. end? I, I was going to say that for for redraft purposes, I'm not drafting any of their right wide receivers. I'm not uh, grabbing Bateman. I'm not grabbing Flowers. I'm I'll not go in. On, on, I'll go in on. Flowers. I'm in on Andrews. I'm in on Lamar. You know, it's and, and keep in mind, um, Greg Roman's gone. Todd Monken is in, so yeah, he, you know, raid. he wants to throw it a yeah. lot and air raid this system out. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean the. Uh, Lamar's got to stay healthy. Also, I'm in you love. You get him with all the weapons in the world. If he's on the bench, he can't do anything. That's pretty important. Um, I'm also in love with J.K. Dobbins. Uh, he is one year removed, and I think J.K. two legs Dobbins. Can he? Yeah. Can we he's have got, two strong he's got, legs? He's got two strong legs. And, and J.K. two uh, K. <laughs> oh, J.K. two legs. Two leg. No, J.K. No, two leg. I just trying to see how big I'm, this production. Gets. I, 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 the, the situation here is it's him and the Gus Bus and. You know, they didn't add any running backs in this draft, so they are confident about his health. He's still only 24 years old. I really like J.K. Tuleg. J.K. Tuleg? <laughs> it's very funny yeah. to me. Yeah, it's not every day you can get a nickname for the <laughs> normal amount of legs everybody has. Right. Uh, Cincinnati, coming off the 12-4 and four season. You know, Chase Brown, fifth-round rookie, running back, whatever. That's not a me. draft That's not a draft pick to make a foundation of your – Super Bowl contending running back room. So to me, this is a little insightful on the Joe Mixon saga because they have to add somebody in free agency or Joe Mixon's playing football for the Bengals. And if he is, then all the best ball investments right now, all of the dynasty trades right now are the sneakiest little picks you can make. Where Joe Mixon is going in best ball right now is delicious because I agree with you, Andy. It has to be an expectation that currently Joe Mixon is going to be the starting I mean, running Ryan's back. Ryan's gone. P. Ryan is gone. The situation is good. P. Ryan being gone is actually why I am interested in Chase Brown. Chase Brown was a very productive yes, running he back. Was. The, his last season, he had 328 carries, 1,643 rushing yards, and caught 27 passes. So his production is elite. Um, he's a little bit older for a running back, and he he's finds a himself lighter in, too. He finds himself in a situation. Yeah, 205. Uh, finds himself in a situation without P. Ryan where he could just be the backup uh, right off the bat, and then, of course, should any legal situation take a turn. Yeah, no, that's the fair fair estimation there for Brown is that, you know, what happens with Mixon? Does he get a suspension? Does if, he if, Mick, if something happens and Mixon moves, they will probably bring in a free agent like Zeke. But this 
the the ambiguous situation. That's why uh, Travion Williams should be on your dynasty bench, and that's why Chase Brown is worth. Yeah, I think the Travion that, mention is very important there. And and, and so yeah, we're adding Williams and then Brown in like the third round of a of a rookie draft. The those picks are probably going to be set on fire anyways. The the upside I can at least convince myself of a story where Chase Brown becomes important. Speaking of setting picks on fire, I plan to set a lot of picks on fire again on Big Irv, baby. <laughs> Irv Smith Jr. <laughs> I will be drafting him with my last pick in redraft leagues at tight end. He and, was a big winner. And he will super disappoint this year like he has <laughs> every single year. But the situation couldn't be better. They were a home for Dalton Kincaid or Michael Mayer uh -huh. or Laporta or a tight end of any shape and oh, size. No. And they took none of them. At home was for Big Irv. Big Irv Smith. They yes, said, hey, sir. a guy who doesn't generally play any games, he's our guy. Let's rely on Let's him. Let's rely on him. Um, what What's the rest of that depth chart? I think they had, they re-signed Drew Sample. Yeah, Not if, you, if that's all you got to beat out, Big Irv stay healthy. Smith. Ironically, get help, get Big healthy. Irv has a very small sample size. Oh, very nice. So, Yeah, now Big Irv right now. He's going to swerve. He's going to get overhyped for this all offseason. So yeah. be ready for that. By me. Uh, the Jets. The Jets uh, drafted one of the better centers in the draft in the second round. Um, they drafted another running back to compliment Mr. Brees Hall. Probably puts Michael Carter even further on the outskirts of fantasy relevance. Israel Abanaconda, who you love, Jason. I really did like Abanaconda. I thought he has great breakaway runs. He's he's not necessarily a tackle breaker, which is rare because usually the breakaway runs come from like breaking a tackle and then going. He needs that crease, that seam. Um, so but, not really breakaways. They're more like yeah, they're sprintaways, getaways, getaways. He gets oh, away from. Yeah. He doesn't get, get away. touched. Getaway. He doesn't break away from people. No, he's the getaway driver. Okay. Um, but I, I, I really did like him and obviously I would have really loved considering, um, that Bam is there and Michael Carter are there. They have backups on the roster right now that are at least legitimate. I would have really enjoyed the confidence of leaving this draft without adding a running back. I know it's only a fifth round pick, but it says, Hey, our running back room is solid. We know Brees is extremely healthy and we can rely on him this year. The fact that they took someone who kind of has a, He's not. I don't want to say he's got the Brees skill set. Brees is elite. Uh, Izzy is not. Uh, but he has that same. He's got a lot in common with him. The reason I liked Izzy is a lot of the same reasons. Like it, it's the same type of things I enjoy in my running backs. The the ability to 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 hit the outside before others to take a ball to the house. Um, so I just it does make me question how high I'm willing to. Be confident on Brees right now. Yeah, their fourth pick, the Jets' fourth pick in the draft. Um, the Patriots, they went with the um, daring kicker-punter combo in the draft. Fourth round, sixth round, kicker-punter combo. Oh, uh, Chad Ryland? They also... Mean. Give me a... Oh, I see. Yeah, Kyle knows. Kyle's cracking up back there. No, I'm just laughing that they took a kicker. They're dumb. No, Sorry. you're, you're thinking about boom, boom. I mean, oh, Ry you're looking for rhymes? Ryland? I mean, we could do some work. It's with that. right there. <laughs> okay. It's right there. Uh, Kayshawn, well, I don't know if it's right there because I'm not sure I'm following what you're saying. Island? Oh, you're just, that. that's what's right there? Yeah, the rhyme. I mean, names rhyme with words pretty common. Yeah, but right. I was really Island. hoping you meant that you had something else that you yeah. had found. Oh. I mean, yes. I thought there was some innuendo I was missing. Yes, oh, I, I, do no. I do connect Ryland oh, with it. Island, Yeah, but, but I was hoping for something better. Speaking of innuendo. I keep it clean. Uh, Boote. Kip Booty. <laughs> Kayshawn Booty. Uh, sixth round. In the sixth round. The Patriots have a knack. Don't care. They have a knack for doing two things. One is they draft guys who were extremely high recruits out of high school. And they love high school stats. Booty is, was uh, as reclamation projects or something as big uh, of a recruit as you could possibly have that year. A five star prospect supposed to be the next special thing. The second thing they're good at doing is being a wide receiver graveyard. They don't know how to develop wide receivers. And the fact that Kayshawn Booty 
has had his development go backwards from his incredibly awesome rookie year at LSU gives me a lack of confidence with this landing spot because he's someone that you need to pay attention to because of what he has done in the past. He he got injured and had a couple bad seasons, so you can write it off and say it was because of injury. He's still a young man, but the fact that he went to a place that doesn't develop wide receivers well historically makes me sad. No, Ramondre Stevenson and Tyquan Thornton are big winners. Thornton, you know, is going to have a huge opportunity this year. I liked what I saw in the field in limited times last year, and look, Jacoby Myers is gone. They don't they don't have the competition there, and they didn't invest one of their top. I mean, they drafted a kicker in the fourth round. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven picks before they invested in a wide receiver. Devontae Parker is still there. Uh I like I like Thornton. Uh and I like Stevenson's situation now that they didn't invest in a running back. They were another yeah, place that agreed. we thought, you know, maybe you'd see a uh if it's not Bijan, it was, you know, Charbonnet or somebody going there to be a, a major competitor for Fumbleson. Well he probably and, um, he probably was. And then Pete Carroll. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, this is uh, – Ramondre is a, a massive winner and, and should and, be extremely and, exciting. They Mac, got rid of Mac Damian Jones. Harris. Mac Jones is a winner just because yeah. they didn't replace him. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he's a winner because yeah, I feel they, like they should have added something <laughs> for him. They got rid of Jacoby Myers and say and are saying, here's some booty. Yeah, when, when the depth chart already there, they're the winners, the quarterback's probably the loser. Yeah. You don't think that they went in and they were like, hey, buddy, booty call. Oh. <laughs> Let's go get some Ws. Let's go get some Ws. <laughs> the Dolphins, uh, they invested their second pick in the draft. They only, oh, they only had four picks. Yeah. And they invested the second pick in the draft in Devon A-Chain. They used a quarter of their draft. <sighs> Mike, oh. Mike McDaniel lobbied heavily uh, for uh, the tiny, speedy, Electric, miniature, Devon H. He should be 100% in consideration for the number three rookie running back based on this landing spot. This is a player who pre-draft, I did not believe would find a role that allows him to be successful at his weight. He's 189 pounds. We've talked a lot in the offseason, if you haven't been with us, about the fact that those guys just don't get opportunity, even if they're great, even if they have a good NFL career, for fantasy purposes, they don't touch the ball enough to be a weekly starter when they don't weigh enough. But he goes to the picture-perfect landing spot with day two draft capital in a scheme that is made as a match made in heaven for him. And his blazing, what was he, 4 3 two He's speed, a track star. He He's going to house call four touchdowns this year I am so curious about how they use him because, you know, it, because of, like you said, is he going to be the kick returner? Is he going to be, how, how often is he going to be on the field? You know, they brought back four running backs in that room that are the bigger guys. And here's speedster track star. Let's draw up a play for Devon A chain and let him go 60 to the house screen game. Um, third down. I I'm very curious what Mike McDaniel will do with the new toy because Look, Jeff Wilson and and Raheem Mostert, they're going to have their roles in this offense. They're going to eat from each other's plate, unfortunately. And then Devon Achain is going to have his unique role in this offense. Yeah, and I, I, I do still worry with, with that size that maybe he only gets eight carries a game. Oh, I think it could be less. For sure. I do. I, I think it'll be powerful, but it could be less. And that's why I like him a lot more in a best ball than a redraft. If nice. you've got to rely on him as your weekly starter and plug him in your lineup every week and then he ends up with seven touches, he's, his floor is going to be a really bad game, and you're going to have a hard time putting him in your starting lineup. But if you can just have him on one of those rosters where when he has a big game, he's in your lineup, he will have his big game. I, I wonder if he's going to be – a little bit Tavon Austin at the running back position for this team in the sense that he might be more valuable for the Dolphins than he is in, in non best ball fantasy situations. For sure. Mike, did you like the home for a yeah. chain? Is I groaned as you were talking about it because I was completely out, completely out on a chain. And then it, there was one team that could draft him and I would, I would come crawling back and say, I'm so sorry that I was out on Devon A chain and one out of 32. Here we are. So yes, he's very, he's interesting. The oh. Buffalo bills. 
They drafted Dalton Kincaid with their first round draft pick. They, Absolute. They traded up over a tight end needy team to get him. I mean, this was this was their you know, when you look at Gabe Davis and Khalil Shakir as winners, eh, sorta to me. Yeah. Yes, they're winners in the sense that you weren't directly replaced with a pass catcher at your exact position in the depth chart. But don't be mistaken. They added Dalton Kincaid to go run routes and play wink wink wide receiver and be a massive weapon for Josh Allen. Well the nice thing oh, excellent. excellent. Uh the nice thing for Gabe Davis though is that He's, he is going to be in two wide receiver sets. Uh, Dalton Kincaid won't ever take him off the field. Now he'll t he'll get targets, but someone was going to get targets. Might as well be a more talented guy to help your offense. I am not nearly as high as I've seen a lot of people in the dynasty community on year one Dalton Kincaid. I'm still of the mindset that I'm going to play the math, analytics, historically based reality that rookie tight ends – don't do enough to be great for fantasy. Evan Ingram did it once. I think Jeremy Shockey did it once. And so this guy could, the, the, you know, you're you're having him talked about ad nauseum as, well, he's just a wide receiver. He's going to be the slot wide receiver. A and, and that's great. He's going to run a lot of routes, but he is still a rookie tight end. And I think if you use a rookie tight end as a wide receiver, he's not going to just go out there and dominate. That's my opinion. Well, but he could put up 600, 700 yards as a rookie. Sure. Yeah. And I think it's better for Josh Allen. Like Josh Allen gets a weapon in the first round, which is great because he needed more than Stephon Dix. Yeah. Where they were in the draft was unfortunate. I think they would have preferred to get one of those top four round one wide receivers, but they all went right before him. And the next best pass catcher was, oh, was Dalton like Kincaid. Going best athlete. Yeah. Going best player available versus forcing it at wide receiver. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. It's, it, they, they went what, uh, 20 21 22 23 and then they drafted 25 yep so it was like I think they were holding their breath that one of those wide receivers dropped to him but as soon as um and I will say this uh the draft war room they talked early in the day about if the tight end from Utah slips trading up so they they did want him yeah I mean trading up for him is it says something Mike agreed Justin Shorter in the fifth the wide receiver yeah. not that short six two two twenty nine. Oh, 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 oh. yeah I'm so nice. they did add another wide receiver to the room. They don't have McKenzie anymore, right? Um, they don't have Crowder anymore. So seems like Diggs wants to play there right now, so that's good. Dawson Knox has to be considered a loser in this situation because, look, the, the odds that maybe Knox is, is, the, is the one tight end for them in tight end terms, in terms of just like being on the field, being utilized a lot, but Kincaid's the better dynasty long-term value at tight end um younger it's crazy because Knox has just signed a big deal yeah he's not going away anywhere and I think he's going to basically be about 85 percent of what he was I don't see Dalton Kincaid coming in here and now they get 50 50 on target volume they play two different positions and Knox is a really good blocker as well so Knox will be on the field a lot he'll probably run slightly fewer routes catch slightly fewer balls um but he it might open things up for his, you know, touchdowns are so unreliable, but if you're watching out for more weapons, you could sneak Knox out for touchdowns on the other side. And I would imagine that Knox will plummet. He will be left for dead in deep drafts where you're drafting three tight ends, you know, in a best ball league. And I would scoop him up as my tight end three, but he certainly takes a hit. Mims the word. The Broncos, their first pick in this draft. They didn't have a lot, five picks total, but they drafted Marvin Mims out of Oklahoma. One of uh, Mike, I know you love this pick for them. Yes. Uh, I think we were all fans of Mims in the scouting process. You, it's significant to me that he's the kind of hand selected first selection by Peyton. Yep. What was your take on this selection? What's his real redraft upside? So the, it's when you're looking at what is the value of a rookie to you. You know, you're you're putting all the puzzle pieces together, and it was yeah, I already liked I liked Marvin Mims before the draft. Check. Uh, athletic profile is fantastic. Sub four four, you know, explosiveness that is in the let me get the it ninety uh, second percentile. That's a huge check. The production profile not ex not exactly where you want it to be, but a thousand yards, six touchdowns. So it's it's not the worst thing in the world. A team that has very little draft picks because of all the trades that they've had to make. 
Their first pick is Marvin Mims. And I, I think that this year, it, the ceiling is not very high, but long-term, the depth chart is going to clear its way yes, for, it is. for Marvin Mims. Cortland Sutton will not be there very long. Jerry Judy got his fifth year picked up. He could be re-signed, and that's okay for someone like Marvin Mims. And Tim Patrick's contract is pretty team friendly that they could easily What's, move on after this and, and year. KJ Hamler. I mean Hamler. Okay, that's that that's is he, done. he's still on the roster for yeah, this year. Yeah, he is. He's But Mims basically does what he does only better, which yes. is Yeah. You know, and this, downfield. This wasn't just their second round pick, their first pick in the draft. They traded up. Uh, so they gave up a little bit more capital to go from, I believe, 68 to 63 to get Mims. Yeah, I like him. Is Russell Wilson a winner from the draft? I mean, yes. Russell Wilson is a winner from the draft. They went out and got him another wide receiver. Life? and uh, Whether he's good for fantasy is a matter of whether he's good at football anymore. I mean, I'm going to bet against him. He's hanging out with uh, Anacondas now. A Banaconda? No, not the right back. A Banaconda don't well, you want, want to none unless you got... There it is. We don't. We're probably not going to get to use this, so we'll just we'll do it once. Uh, the Raiders <laughs> invested in tight end after going edge rusher Tyree Wilson with number seven overall. They grabbed Michael Mayer, who was a projected first round draft pick, slips into the top of the second Another out of trainer. Notre Dame. They are replacing Darren Waller through the draft. Michael Mayer. They also signed, I believe, it was Austin Hooper this off season, right? And OJ Howard. Yeah. So yeah, Michael Mayer's got a clear path here. And uh, wide receiver in the third round, Trey Tucker from Cincinnati. You know, if you believed Austin Hooper was going to be a sneaky pickup, that kind of goes out the window. Yeah, I don't Mayer's believe that anymore. Yeah, I mean, again, he's still a rookie tight end. I love Michael Mayer. I, I think I, I, I don't know if I stand alone. No, no, he's a good player. Okay, he's he was still my tight end one. Oh, he was. Kincaid was by far Kincaid my number was one your guy. Number one as well. Andy, no, or? Mayer was my number. Oh, one. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I, I think Mayer is outstanding, uh, but I don't believe that this is a situation. Even though it's a great landing spot for him, I don't think he's going to be relevant year one for uh, fantasy. No chance with Jimmy G in those short passes. I mean, he's really, really good. He'll he'll find the soft spots in the zone. His football IQ is off the charts. He's very, very young. But, I, you know, with Austin Hooper there, I don't think Austin Hooper stands in his way. Like, he can't overcome Austin Hooper on the depth chart. But they'll but, both get playing. But time. he's a veteran. And yeah. so he's going oh, yeah. to be out there all the time. And I, Michael Mayer is not going to be a 100% snap guy in his rookie year. All right. I want to talk about my favorite pick in the entire draft. Okay. Oh, for fantasy Trey purposes. Tucker? Nope, we're moving on to the Chargers. Oh, we're <laughs> the wide receiver, Darius Davis. I hear you from TCU. No, I'm going with the first round pick, actually, oh. Jason. Surprisingly, oh. uh, Quentin Johnston, the surprise Man. pick at number 21 overall to the Chargers. They went with the, and we we almost said it on the show right before the draft, where it's like, you know, you might have liked. Obviously, JSN went first, but maybe you like Addison. Maybe you like Azay Flowers, but somebody's gonna fall in love with the mammoth of a man that was Quentin Johnston and the ability for him to, you know, just out physical, a defensive back. Um, I like Quint Quentin Johnston quite a bit in. Uh, so you like my, uh, my, my rookie pick, huh? Your rookie pick. Yeah. He oh, cause you grabbed him in our, Oh yeah. I liked it. Yeah. That's right, baby. <laughs> wow. It's just fun to hear when, when, when you make a pick yeah. and then you hear someone who's got, you know, some fantasy football prowess, and they're like, yeah, that's a good pick. All I right. just think that oh, the, I know. there were situations where Quentin Johnston came out of this draft with zero excitement, yes. and then there was a situation like this, which is the absolute opposite to me. I think uh, rookie wide receivers can make a huge impact in year one. You have a quarterback that I truly believe in, and then Quentin Johnston just, to me, it stabilizes a room that's got, you know, the Mike Williams question marks. Those hurt my view of Herbert, and you just fixed them. In my opinion, Quentin Johnston just fixed my some of my fears with Justin Herbert's season, which also were compounded by the age of Keenan Allen and the injuries. It's like you stabilized it with a top pick that is going to be a difference maker in your offense. Um, if you're Quentin Johnston, you know how can you not be thrilled going here and, and, and catching passes from Justin Herbert? Um, outside of the the team we're about to talk to. Johnson had to be just as happy as anybody could be. I just love the pick. I think it, it makes fantasy more exciting to have him land in this spot. His landing spot was why an hour before day two, I was talking about, man, this draft's going so great 
for fantasy purposes because Quentin Johnston was someone that I could have left and been like, he's my wide receiver eight now. He could have Jalen Hyatted, and instead he goes to play the Mike Williams role in the future and for now work into that spot. And how many games is Mike Williams playing this year? We know it's not 17, so he'll have a few opportunities to really step in. You also have Kellen Moore. Uh, as the yes. offensive coordinator this year. So it's it's going to be a little bit of a new system. And if you're telling me that he gets to have this new tool, this new toy for figuring out how Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Quentin Johnson can all work together, I, I expect it to succeed. So I really, really like Quentin Johnson. I still have Jordan Addison a spot ahead of him. I think you've got Quentin Johnson ahead of Addison, right? I do. I do. And I, yeah, I, I'm excited to see what happens. If you saw uh, their head coach come out, uh, Staley, he said, look, they fell in love with him at the Combine and then worked backwards off of that in that process. And so Johnston arrives in Los Angeles. Joshua Palmer, you failed the test. That's that's my mm -hmm. view of it. Yeah. Not that you can't be a um, a possession uh, helper on this in this room, but you failed the test of are you the next man up to be a huge difference maker? They got to do what they can. I mean, Herbert's due for a contract, right? He yes. He, I mean, they, they this is their future. They've got to go out there and make sure he has the weapons. Yeah, Joshua Palmer was a third round wide receiver who played up to the level that you'd expect yeah. from a third round wide receiver. This is a the number two wide receiver taken in the draft at with a first round pick. Uh, I really like it. And the best news for me, uh, because uh, league of record, I have him on my team is Austin Eckler. There were questions of, oh, he's going to be traded, he's going to be cut, they're not going to extend him, they're going to draft his replacement. Instead, they didn't even draft him a backup. It's him alone running it back with another 100 targets. Let's go, baby. It's true. And he's betting on himself in a contract year. And he plays fantasy. He's going to score so many <laughs> fantasy points. Our <laughs> final team, Mike, give me the winners and losers for the Kansas City Chiefs, the defending Super Bowl champions. They go second round. Uh, with, uh, with I, I think a pick that we're all, were you surprised by the pick? The the Rasheed Rice pick, um, uh, maybe maybe a, a little bit because they had just spent the second round on Sky Moore and won a Super Bowl with you know kind of an absence of of true wide receiver talent. But I mean, coming in at, at pick number, Rasheed Rice is very. Oh, is that it? I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize he was a Sammy. Yes, let's go. It, it is very, very. It, it when it, when a wide receiver is uh, drafted to Patrick Mahomes, you have to get excited. And will it be Sky Moore all over again? I, was, I, is, I don't think that so. Just mess the situation up. <laughs> what what pick was? Oh, so one pick apart. Yep, Sky. one pick apart. Sky Moore was fifty four last year, and oh, that's the problem. He wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> It was close, but there can only be one each year, and so, this year it's Rasheed Rice. So it's 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 very exciting. Uh, I mean, biggest winner, Isaiah Pacheco, seventh round running back. I like it, and he was one of the players that you in the draft. Every time the Chiefs were on the board, you had to be holding your breath, crossing your fingers, crossing your arms, crossing your like every body part you can possibly cross. You had it going. <laughs> to protect your precious Isaiah Pacheco that you got probably off of the waiver wire. And he came out, and he will be the starting running back again this year. Yeah, if you look at what they did with Jarek McKinnon, which is said, uh, let's wait for the draft, and then, hey, we'll resign you if we don't get a running back. That, to me, was Jameer Gibbs. That that says that, you know, where he was supposed to be drafted, he could have been available there for their last pick, and that would have annihilated all, all oh the other running gosh. backs on this oh team. My gosh. But instead, that didn't happen. They go, they re-sign Jarek McKinnon, and I think we can – expect more of the same of what we got from last year maybe a little bit more out of Pacheco going back to Rasheed Rice he's an explosive athlete really good athleticism not necessarily like long speed that's but where the athlete part comes his, from. his his uh his burst his vertical uh explosiveness his broad jump very talented athlete he worked out with Patrick Mahomes in Dallas this offseason Pat said he wanted him 96 receptions for 1,355 yards and 10 touchdowns in his final season. A very Didn't productive Pat player. Want Clyde? Yes. yes. Maybe Pat's not so, a good GM. <laughs> I, I agree. And and I think it's <laughs> worth noting, right? Like, Kadarius Tony, or not Kadarius Tony, um, McCall Hardman. McCall Hardman was going to be the thing when they thought Tyreek Hill was no longer going to have an NFL career. 
And so you draft him, and he, guess what? He wasn't the thing. And last year, MBS. Sky Moore is going to be – well, I don't think oh, – like, I never thought MBS was going to be good because we, so, we saw enough from him some already. Some people in this room – some person thought that. in this room. Uh, I, th I thought he would be better than Juju, and I think they were pretty close. Sky Moore, uh, you know, you, you, you swung and missed on Sky Moore because I don't, you know, we talked about it earlier, rookies that fail their rookie year when they have opportunities probably statistically, historically, aren't going to get it done. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't take the swing again. You're swinging for home runs in fantasy. That's what wins. And if Rasheed Rice turns into a really good possession receiver, he's the – the type, and you know, he he's the rare big guy, right? Six one two zero four in this draft class. He could be a hundred and thirty five target guy in a couple of years. I am taking the shot at him having the chance to be the number one wide receiver for Patrick Mahomes. I did in my in our main league. What pick did you get him at? It was two zero four. Yeah, it was later than I thought he would. What go. wide receivers did you pass on in the rookie class? Let me Marvin Mims. Yeah, Marvin definitely. Mims. Yep. So you went. Yeah, I would have gone Rice over Mims, for sure, due to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, no, I, I, I get and it. Draft capital, second round. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it, it makes sense. That's not a, that wasn't a reach at two or four at all. No, 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 it's, it's late. I, I thought. I Rashid, thought it was late too. I thought you were going to say into the first. No, I, I thought Rasheed Rice because he went to the Chiefs would be a late first round. All right, we got to wrap this thing up. What do we got going on next week, Brooksy? It's Dynasty Week. More Dynasty. So we'll be uh, dedicating next week to some Dynasty content here on the Fantasy Footballers. And if you need a little extra, we've got the Dynasty show as well. Like we said, mock draft episode just came out yesterday. Go check that out. Search for Fantasy Football's Dynasty podcast on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen. We appreciate your support. Uh, we are here for you. We're trying to help you win your league. That's it. That's why we exist. Free content all year and, long to on. help you win your league. And smiles. Yeah, we want to entertain you and help you win your league. Yeah. You can do both. People feel like you can't do both. You can do we've we've done both. <laughs> I wasn't smiling when you won. No, I was but smiling. But you were doing both. Yeah. I was yeah. cartwheeling to be honest. Yeah. Fat chance. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.